If the voters approve of a charter commission, then Pueblo City's voters will need to vote for delegates for that charter commission in a delegate election. Within 30 days of initiation, the governing body must call an election to form the charter commission and elect members of the commission, and then that election must be held within 120 days of the call of the election. CRS 3122. All registered electors of the municipality are eligible, and any vacancy on the charter commission shall be filled by appointment of the governing body. 3122103. Those who are interested in being a delegate for the charter convention must file a sufficient petition with the clerk within 30 days of publication of the election notice signed by at least 25 registered electors. 3122043. A district and or at large map of public city must be drawn up. The delegates will come from the compact districts of approximately equal population uh, that the municipality divided into, or there can be a combination of districts and at large candidacies. 3122210 3122210 The Charter Commission may c be composed of 9 to 21 members, must be an odd number. 3122061B Within 20 days after the delegates to the Charter Convention have been elected, the Charter Convention shall meet at a time and date set by the governing body. 3122104 All charters written in Colorado State must have provisions governing initiative, referendum of measures, and recall of officers, 3122212. Within 180 days after the delegates to the convention have been elected, a proposed charter shall be submitted to the governing body, 3122210. Within 30 days after after the new proposed charter has been submitted to the governing body, a notice of the charter election needs to be published. 3122071. From at least 30 days up to 185 days after the publication of the notice of the charter election, the charter election finally will be held. Overall, three elections is needed in order to fundamentally change Pueblo City's form of government. One election is to get voter approval for a charter convention to begin with. One election is to get voter approval of the delegates to that charter convention. And one election is needed for the voters to approve of the new charter. There's a whole other separate set of rules for how a county is supposed to administer a special election for the new charter that was written by a charter commission, 3011505. Conclusion. Article 20, Section 6, Clause 7, specifically mentions Pueblo City by name. All provisions of the charters of the city and county of Denver and the cities of Pueblo, Colorado Springs, and Grand Junction are hereby ratified, affirmed, and validated uh, as of their date. In the 1921 city and county of Denver v. Stinger case, Denver declared that she had the power to legislate for herself, uh, themselves, herself. She had the power to legislate for herself, but they have the power to legislate for themselves, and were no longer subject to the legislative power of the state. Stinger, 1921. Denver, Boulder, Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Grand Junction, Trinidad, Fountain, Manitow Springs, Canyon City, and La Junta and many more cities in the Centennial State have Imperium in Imperio jurisdiction. Imperium Imperio is a Latin phrase meaning a sovereign government power within another sovereign government power. These are the home rule cities that are close to Pueblo plus Denver, and, uh, Boulder, the other big cities of Colorado. Colorado Springs, Grand Junction, Trinidad, Fountain, Fontaine, Fontaine, Fountain, it's Fountain, that's the English pronunciation, Manitow Springs, Canyon City, and La Junta, and many more cities in the Centennial State have Imperium, Imperio jurisdiction. Imperium, Imperio is a Latin phrase meaning a sovereign, a sovereign government power 
within another sovereign government power. Valid question 2A is unconstitutional on its face. Even the opposing legal theory of the Cooley Doctrine, Dillon's rule, would agree. The government of Pueblo City didn't use the proper channels that change in the form of government in Pueblo City, an American city nation governed by charter law requires. The charter couldn't be more clear or more explicit about the proper method of changing the form of government in Pueblo City. Section 1-2 establishes the city manager as the chief executive. And if anybody in Pueblo City wants to change that, then they must abide by the Charter Convention provision of Section 1-2. The government of Pueblo City was so annoyed with that pesky Charter Convention clause, they removed that pesky Charter Convention provision in Section 1-2 in their bundle of 70 changes in their 10-page document corresponding to ballot question 2A. Instead of going through a charter convention as the 1954 charter mandates with three elections and lots of other specific requirements Colorado statutes require, the government of public city is attempting an illegal and unconstitutionally backdoor approach to changing Pueblo City's form of government with valid question 2A. Not only is the chief executive's powers going to be changed with ballot question 2A, but so is the legislative and the judicial branches of the city government. Ballot question 2A is more akin to a brand new skinny charter instead of a mere ballot question. The government of Pueblo City put ballot question 2A on the ballot, but they simply weren't allowed to do so. Ballot question 2A is akin to putting a ban free speech or ban the Second Amendment ballot question on the ballot. It's on its face, it's not constitutional, so therefore it's illegal and should have never been put on the ballot to begin with. If a person collected $200 before pass and go in Monopoly, they simply aren't allowed to do so. It's against the rules. And if the cheater insisted on cheating, I wouldn't play the game with them anymore. If a person moved a knight nine spaces on a chessboard, they'd have to move their piece back or else they forfeit the game. That's what the government of Pueblo City should do. Move their peace back or forfeit the game. If those who supported ballot question 2A truly wanted to change Pueblo City's three branches of government and change Pueblo City Manager into a mayor, then they should go through the proper legal and constitutional channels in order to do so, i.e., a charter convention. Ballot question 2A should be declared null and void by way of a permanent injunction respectfully submitted this 26th of the day of October 2017. Jonathan Masters, Pueblo, Colorado. Peace.